So, um, let's open up just first of all for any questions about any of the features or where, where we are with things. Anybody have any specific questions you'd like to ask? Peter. <laughs> Yeah, they'll, they'll work fine with 16.1. They're just replacements in each case to the, the main store procedure that loads clinical data. So you find a SQL statement that's sitting there doing nothing while you're waiting for several hours. And then you go through and, and address that so that it runs in a decent time. And it's, it produces the same results as far as I, we can see from testing. And the changes are in the Transmart data repo or in the Transmart ETL repo? They're in Transmart data because they're changes to the store procedures. And so the update scripts, um, when you run this dump from Postgres, it includes the source code of the procedures and it tells you which ones have changed. So you can know which procedures you need to, to reload the code for. Yeah, we're kind of reluctant to issue sort of 16.1a, but yep. yeah, it, it could be possible. There's a few other things in the, the virtual image that, that could be improved as well from, from recent testing. Um, we're probably closer to having a, a 16.2 image with everything. And it's probably better to concentrate on that than to, to do a 16.1 fix. But in principle, yes. Okay. And just on the, uh, the topic of um, ETL, since you brought it up, you know, we use our own internal ETL. Uh, the modifications for that, that were made to that ETL to load the uh, Plank data, um, we're going to ensure that those are available in the Kettle Scripts uh, based workflow. And, and conversely, our team will work to incorporate whatever changes um, were made to, um, to the community's ETL to ensure that we are you know, maintaining compatibility with whatever kind of data is out there. Uh, and it, for those of you who haven't used TM Data Loader, it, it is worth a look. It's, it's a pretty powerful ETL tool. OK. Any other questions about any of the current features that are being deployed? Jay, did you have something? On the, the information that I received from the developers at the side of the University of Luxembourg is that uh, in terms of uh, performance, let's say, the number of probes that you bring to the analysis, it would affect, or the number of uh, samples, for example, it would affect the performance of the method. Uh, as long as I know from the reports, we don't have any uh, extra uh, development that would make that to be, uh, uh, how can I say, more more powerful or something. Uh, 
what I know in the moment that I can say here is uh, that it's it's being like fixed the way in which the analysis, uh, the results of the analysis are displayed in the interface. Right? I don't have the, the information here now in terms of increasing the, 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 the number of samples, whether there is a gain or loss of performance in the analysis. I, I can't say you for sure here now. Yeah, I think it'd be really worthwhile if, if uh, Etrix would publish out. The, I, it probably already is, right? I don't know if I should know this. But it would be maybe worthwhile if Etrix published out the environment specs mm -hmm. so people can compare. Uh, to the setups. I, I think what, what may happen, may happen is that people are going to get smart R on their own environments like Pfizer will eventually and probably in the next three months. Uh, we're going to run through it and, and it will be really interesting to see if we see performance right. differences across various, various installations. Sure. So I think it would be really worthwhile to see have those specs published. Yeah, um, what I can say is that from the side, uh, from, from the, the images that I showed you here, in terms of the running of the analysis, the runtime, etc., it was not made in, li in like a major server. It's, it's one specific VM that's running locally uh, in the internal setup of the University of uh, Luxembourg uh, that's providing you with the results you saw in the images. Uh, I'm sure that uh, as long as you have like a better server in which the system is deployed, uh, you have like also a gain of performance there. But I mean, I support the idea of uh, publishing together the specifications in which these uh, performances should be uh, uh, accepted to be okay, to be you know to be uh, acceptable. So I think it's the specs on the servers as well as how, how you configure the environment, whether you right. have our serve running separate VM. Like, like we have, which is our serve and the app serve, which running on the same VM, uh -huh. which I think historically what was when the two were done is historically it was assumed been part of the issue that we see with performing on the performance on local workflows, whereas J and J always historically said no, we have no no issues at all with performance on the two different servers. In addition to the specs of the, of the VM, also a configuration of each VM. For each of the core features of the Yeah, I think it's important to make this clear which uh, setup is being used for for the version of Transmat that's running with this Smart R. <coughs> There's also the question with Smart R that a lot of it is actually done on the client, so it's hard to compare one with another. It may be the on the client side. That'll but be, so that'll be interesting. I was, I, I, I was thinking sort of the, the provisioning to the client. Right. Right? There's a clear gain though. So yeah. normally when you run an advanced workflow, it spends ages and you're watching it saying gathering data. That now happens once with Smart R and then you just explore the same data repeatedly and that gives you a performance gain straight away. Yeah. Well, so I think everyone would be happy. So, okay, well, okay. So that's, I mean, it depends on the perspective that we take. So Guam is the same thing, right? You get the data back once. or whether it's multiple times, is, is, that, is that one time when you can eke out a list of 50 genes or make my heat map and it takes two hours versus someone else two minutes, it'll, it's going to be kind of yeah, an interesting yeah. comparison that people are going to see and maybe we should be kind of prepared uh, for, for, you know, for, for some baseline in terms mm. of yeah, I haven't really seen a hit, so I don't think we're going to have a problem with that comparison. Mm -hmm. The moment people see that currently you get a you get a heat map, you get an image. In 16.2 with Smart R, you get something with all the rest of the data in, you can explore and, and play. Right. They'd actually tolerate a, a performance hit to get that, I'm sure. It'll be a brave new world, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I just had one thing there, uh, Jay, is that, that we've had a number of questions in some other areas where um, just the whole question of what's the what's the recommendations in terms of the, you know, the, the minimum system configuration and what some of the different parameters are, um, and what browsers to use, you know, all, all these different things that they, we've been asked to re please try to revisit that. So I think something that we need to do during the maybe the, the beta test period is we'll we'll try to take a look at that and see if yeah. we have to make some changes to what we call our stand, you know, base configuration. Yeah, this came up also with the ETL performance. Yeah, so I mentioned exactly. these these studies that take yeah. days to load and various. Um, data curation right. companies said, well, when our system with 50 gigabytes of memory, we have no problem <laughs> No <at> problem. <laughs> yeah. And it's a, it's a dual recommendation, right, yeah. for the people deploying the servers yeah. in their site, 
right? And for the people using the Transma seven day client uh, machines, like on their browsers and stuff, so on. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Okay. Did you have, you have seen a couple? Do you have other? I, I can keep going. Well, go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Until somebody else raises their hand, let's go. Sure. Okay. Okay. One which being my organization. Yep. I think what we've got is, is almost two separate implementations now for people. We should speak about whether that is, and that may be the right thing to do, right? Like that, that may be the right thing. Um, and maybe we talk about is there any is is there any value to trying to yep. merge them together somehow, or if not even merge them together, at least put the plain advanced workflow in a position where it can work with either of them. So one of the things that I hadn't realized that we hadn't noted back in Jason's video is we actually have a genotype uh, implementation. We've had it in there now for almost a year. It was, it was the spies in the hive working together. Uh, it's actually a NoSQL implementation that we have to use a SQL database, but basically zips up markers across across subjects, and for each study, you have a whole list of markers and subjects that go along with it. Uh, LP zipped into a, into a blob sitting in a new table that we put in there. Um, now, you're storing files. I think that that's fine for the genotype. Now, we have an advanced workflow around that genotyping thing that allows you not only to run a, run a plank analysis, run a, run a summary statistics, but also go in and say, well, is there any, I'm, I've got an interest in a certain gene. Is there anything? Um, uh, is there anything in interest in the markers in certain sets of subjects that I'm interested in? So, it, so that's one of the reasons why we do not do it. And so we also have the tables that support our, uh, the summary statistics that we've had actually committed for, for quite a while. But I think I heard from the Clarivate presentation is that you have an advanced workflow, you've got the, the the raw files, the genotype files that uses the substrate for it, and that's sitting on the file server associated with Transform. And then you've got another a new set of tables that's supporting the summary statistics. Is that is that correct? Uh, yeah, the raw Plink data is stored in a Transmart table and uh, copied from the table for each analysis to a folder on the application server where the analysis is executed. I mean, in principle, I think we'd be interested in talking to you about, you know, if somebody uploads um, the binary data set, finding a way for an ETL tool to extract the SNPs and load them into whatever, you know, tables in Transmart you're housing. You said it was an OSQL solution, you know, so some, some way to integrate the binary Plink data set with with um, with whatever SNP workflows already exist because I I don't see the functionality that we are talking about as being uh, anything other than complementary. Ped. So Ped is the is the yes yeah, the non-binary text version. So it's pretty true. Plink has a uh, uh, a, a function which allows you to produce a ped file from a binary data set. So if you have a workflow for uploading ped, then it would be pretty easy to connect with, you know, a, typically users have binary data sets in hand. Yeah, but I think what, what so and that, that's to, to, to some extent that may be neither here nor there. How you want to support your own raw data set. So with the summary statistics, you create a new table for the summary statistics, the loading summary statistics once Plink is run, or do you just essentially build that into a file that can be exported or can be directed? It is, it's a file on the application server which is temporarily available for download by the user. That's kind of potentially an interesting thing because if you hook that up where you're, you're taking those back into the <coughs> yep. summary statistics tables and all of a sudden you've got, and, and then the question is who wants it? So I assume that, that Clarivate didn't, probably did this on, be, on behalf of one of our yes. customers. Yes, we've, we've had a number of customers who've had this kind of functionality request. Yeah. Can you, can you disclose who those customers are? Well, the University of Liverpool is the one that we did this uh, work with. 
um, but we've had other, uh, you know, uh, PPMI has a GWAS data set associated with it, which has never been loaded. And we have a lot of people out there who are interested in seeing that. Why don't we talk about it? I, I think, I think it, again, we're, we're back to it. it's worthwhile to do things like this if there's enough sure. value for people to do it. I don't think we should do it just to do it. But I, I think it, it although a little, kid, a little part of me that says I'd love to do it just to do it because it kind of completes out a whole set of work that we've been, we've been trying to put in place over, over four years. And in our hands, we've got 3,000, almost going up to 3,000 of these analyses that if people are getting more interested in collections of GWAS, which honestly is not always historically necessarily been a great center of, of, of interest, then maybe we got something here. So I think we should maybe go with that. Agreed. Okay. You mean the raw, the, 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 as far as I know, that's not available. What's available from the MAGIC Consortium are the, the results files. I've looked and haven't been able to find the, the raw P-Link data set. I mean, I haven't tried to contact them to see if the data could be distributed or not. So that's still a possibility. Um, with the distribution into 16.2, we were going to include the HapMap uh, set that I sort of as a test bed. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. I have a question for the panel yes. <laughs> and for the audience, actually. Yes. It's regarding to the imaging data analysis, yes. and we're going to show something tomorrow. And I would be very curious to know in terms of the XNet data that's uh, mm -hmm. imported to the Transmart, um, is, is this also like cortex parcellation data from pipelines such as the free surfer or the bigger that is executed in the Erasmus Medical Center? Or am I just talking about something completely different here? Well, that, the importer plugin came from Erasmus, but I'm not sure which <coughs> projects they were which they using it on. Yeah. I can give you the contact details of who to ask. Yeah. We'll, we'll compare to what's being displayed tomorrow, and then we'll have more things to discuss, I'm sure. sure. You've got the XNAT viewer that we've had, we've had available for what a couple of years now. I assume that they were in concert when you apply this. Correct? You have to add the data separately for the XNAT images back to the subjects. So there's there's two loads. So but yeah, they, but, they would but once it's the, loaded, the same yeah. XNAT data. Do you, do you actually load the images from the XNAT no. server? No. no, no images are loaded into Transmart. So the XNAT viewer just links out to. XNAT and tells it where to find each image for a set of images for each patient. So to make the viewer work, you would have to add in those pieces of data. So here are the subjects and here are the links. Yeah, it's a straight table that says this subject ID, this project in XNAT, and this image. That, that sounds pretty reasonable, though. Yeah. But once you have that, right, then you can, you then, can, then you 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 can the search the data and then you open up the image, right? Yeah. And, and as long as the subjects don't, as long yeah. as I think yeah. so, yes, but you could keep some record that would allow you to match them up fairly easily. Good. Other questions? Comments? <clears throat> well, um, I think, um, you know, we, we're expecting to be able to post the release with, what do you think, about a week, Peter? The, the, fir the first view of this? After a week, we'll have been through looking at that. Yeah. Any fixes introduced by the merge, right, we should right, right. be close to getting the, yep. 
the, okay. the next set of GWAS plugins added as well. Right. But I, th I think adding extra plugins is no longer going to right, be right. much of a, a change. Cool. So we're hoping that um, we'll get some activity from the community to really start to take a look at this and give us some feedback. Um, in the meantime, we'll be running sets of tests ourselves to to try to validate, make sure that you know the you know we have um we have a set of automated tests. There's not a lot of them yet, but we're working working towards that. Um, and you can have fun with the, the test server. You could try things like obviously the new interface, right. um, dropping mm -hmm. dimensional data in and selecting and launching uh, launching Smart R and playing with the options. There's a lot you can do. And if you find bugs there, just let us know yep. as you work through. It's very handy then to have people hitting the server trying right. these things. But um, by and large, I mean, this has been a remarkably clean, you know, addition ed of features as we've gone through this in terms of, you know, where, where we've gotten to. It's yeah, gone rather quickly. The scary one was the eTrix yeah, version 3 yeah. because we promised to get that out within eTrix and that was all the new code, the new interfaces, the right. smart R and getting those all working together. And that still went very smoothly. Mm -hmm. the, the bugs yep. we found were, were very discreet and easy to, to fix. You know, we're also also very optimistic that some of these are really, you know, these are features that we've had a lot of requests for. We've done a number of community meetings and presentations at different different places, and it's it really sounds like, you know, this should be a pretty good interest to, to you know, quite a few potential users. So, you know, I think we're going to start, you know, and some other discussions we've had already this week is, you know, how do we how do we get the word out and get the get the information to the right people and you know, try to see how we, you know, how we increase the, the number of users, you know, of the system. will be in production very early yeah, with these exactly, things. Yeah, exactly. depending on them. Yep. Okay, well, I think that's basically, that's it. Unless anybody else has any questions, uh, Peter? Yeah. Okay, all right. So let's, let's call this to a close. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, speakers, for your help.